folks, I'm going to make this plea again. I, do, I understand it's just January and we got like five months of steel. It does not hurt to go ahead and make plans. You brought talk to us, folks, and you have been doing that. Vacation Bible School is coming. And this year is going to be very extravagant, very, very deep. And uh, there's a lot of carpentry that's got to be done. I'm going to try my best to uh, help them uh, with, uh, with that effort. With it. And uh, what, you're, what you're seeing is going to be a rain type forest in the, in the sanctuary during the week of vacation Bible school. So uh, if you could help us out with that, Deacon would appreciate it. We've already recruited a young lady that's a very talented artist and she's going to be able to help us to uh, create what we want uh, looking here at the church. So if you'd like to help, I'm going to let you uh, get with uh, Farrah. Uh, Y'all, she did this for three years for me and she's done a great job. So if you'd like to uh, work in vacation Bible school, if you'll get with her summer when the kids at the college took off for the summer break. <laughs> I, uh, I went out to the parking lot just to check on some stuff. And I, I remember, how many of you remember the Super Bowl? How many remember the Super Bowl? <laughs> Lord, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I found one in the parking lot. And I'm 62 years old. Y'all should have seen me out there throwing that ball on the, pe on the pavement, making that thing bounce. But one of the kids walked up. Our third and fourth year, they still have to come at least twice a month during the summer months. He walked up behind me and said, hey, brother, is that a Super Bowl? And I like to pass out, but I'm thinking, you should know this. And I showed it to him. Now, he's a pretty good-sized brother. He, his arms are probably, uh, he, he, he worked out. His arms was all puffed up. He said, let me try it. He threw that ball, and that ball took off. <laughs> it went forever up in the air. And I thought, now, this kid knows what he's doing with this. I wonder just how many, if I were to bring that Super Bowl inside this church, how many kids would know what it is? Kids now, I'm not talking about that, this kid, I'm talking about that kid. That, them kids right there, would they know what a Super Bowl is? To make that, to make that story shorter, <laughs> some kid walked up and said, I ain't never seen a blue golf ball before. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell you no difference. I wasn't. All right. Get him up to turn to page 139. We got a lot of cross to sing about tonight. So uh, again, this is not great in the storm. If you want to do something, let me know. We'll try our best to do it for you. But we want to start off with this one. At the cross. Let's everybody stand.
You don't do it no more, and I want to know why, so I'm going to do it for y'all tonight. This is the one that I wrote, and uh, I, I, I just can't wait. So it's, coming, it's coming quicker than some of us realize, and I can't hardly wait to stand in the very freaks of gold and look around and say,
about the fact that um, uh, they posted my picture in the paper and were right off the interstate. And I can understand that. I can understand their their security reasoning. And uh, folks, as the months go on, uh, there'll be some training that we need to go through. And we've got the proper people to do this training with us and for us. So we'll, uh, we'll, we will give you far enough notice in advance on on what nights we're going to plan on doing this, these specific trainings. Uh, they do not do this out of uh, pure look at me. They do this out of pure respect for the church. And uh, the biggest thing that we, 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 we will be talking to you about, I know there's several of you that's got permits, and I know several of you has your guns in your purses or in your pockets. What we're going to do is try to, to avoid an uh, OK Corral shootout. So uh, the training is to help us, and this is something that we will be looking into, and folks, will we're going to do our best to uh, create an atmosphere of worship, but in the same sense, we're going to create an atmosphere of protection for you, folk, you folks. I'm more worried about you than me. Uh, I've got a clear view shot. I can see the door. That's the only way they can come in. If you see me hit the floor... You hit the floor. I said that, was talking to somebody, and I said, if you see me hit the floor, you hit the floor. She goes, I'm too big. <laughs> I looked at her and smiled. I said, no, ma'am, not when he comes in there being mean. You, you hit the floor. So y'all just, as the, as the months and the days go by, we get all this stuff finally finalized. We're going to share it with the church, and you will be able to meet the people who serve on this committee and uh, I'm thankful that we have people that are very wise and educated in that field so you'll be uh, uh, you'll, you'll get a, 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 a date on when these things will happen uh, several things that I'm looking into for the new year oh by the way let me do this right quick y'all put on your calendar right now February the 24th which is a Saturday afternoon at 6 o'clock uh, the Down East Boys is coming through town. And they're going to stop here on their way to wherever they're going. That's on December, uh, February the 24th, and it will be at 6 o'clock. Now, Becky uh, Hathaway uh, and I are the ones that's going to pull this thing together. And we, uh, we're, we're really looking forward to a great time with these boys. These guys are good. They, they've been on TBS, and they've been on uh, some other... Uh, gospel channels they're a very good quartet and they're looking for somewhere to be saturday night so i open the doors for them to be here and that's on Fe february the 24th so put that on your calendar and be mindful of it it'll be that afternoon at six o'clock we're going to let becky and the, what's the name of that group she sings with southern quartet i think that's what she called it 
they'll they'll be opening up for the Down East boys. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I don't know yet. I'm me and me and Becky still we're we're still trying to finalize everything to what we're going to do. I really don't want to. Uh, we'll talk more about it as as the days linger on. Okay. All right. If you got a Bible, which I hope you do, if you don't, look right there in front of you. You see a little white Bible. I need for you to turn to John chapter 7, and we're going to start reading in verse 16. John chapter 7, verse 16. John chapter 7, verse 16. John chapter 7. This is the way I was taught to learn the New Testament. You got four brothers that followed Jesus. <laughs> well, uh, we do know that uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we know that two of them were actually writers and they followed the disciples. And so that's how it all became the four Gospels of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight, to uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the kingdom of God and the doctrinal basics of the kingdom of God. Last Sunday evening we talked about John 3.16 and, and uh, Mr. Duprantis, I, I love Jesse. Jesse's a, a very lively individual and he keeps your attention uh, as he's preaching the gospel. But not only that, he has experienced some stuff that uh, it just mind bottles to me that some of the things that he has shared. His personal testimony is probably my favorite. Where he was in a rock and roll group and he, his mom didn't like the fact that he traveled and was around alcohol. And he, his mom, he was on stage just playing as hard as he could play when somebody came up behind him and said, your mom's on the phone. He said, we're right in the middle of a session. He said, I had to stop because you answer mama's call, is what Jesse said. So he walked back there, and the first thing his mama said was, are you drinking? And Jesse said, not yet, mama, but if you let me get off the phone, I'll be glad to. <laughs> he's, so, he's so comical, but... Uh, it's, 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 it's the, the, how God can take an individual and create what he has created. And Jesse DePrentice has done that. He, God has come into his life and changed him. Verse 16 is where I want you to start. Jesus answered and said unto them, My daughter is not, is not mine, but his that sent me. I want to read that again. I want everybody to see this with me real quick, please. It says this, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but it's his that sent me. Do I need to read it again? Is everybody following along? Let's read it one more time. Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not of mine, but uh, his that sent me. Jesus Christ is basically laying it down for everybody. And he's telling them right up front, Folks, this is not my doctrinal beliefs that I'm teaching you. This is God's doctrinal beliefs that I'm teaching you. Well, what I had to do then, folks, is I had to back up and reread this chapter, and I found out that there was some disbelief in the uh, Jesus' brothers. They had kind of a, a dis, disorienting. Now, y'all, we do know that Jesus uh, preached his first message in front of some home folk, and he opened up the book of Isaiah, and he made a statement, today this is being fulfilled. Well, they automatically disowned him. They didn't like the fact that he proclaimed to be the Messiah of God. Now, we do know everybody here uh, has a, a sitting in the Awana program, and then when you sit in your Sunday school classes, the very first thing that we, we talk about is the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Now, everybody needs to understand what the word Messiah means. Messiah means Savior, basically is what it deals, boils down to. It's got several different definitions, but it boils down to one central, uh, one central meaning, and that's Savior. Now, what, what did he save me from? The uh, very first thing that most people ask me when I go to sit down to talk to somebody about their salvation is, well, what am I being saved from? All right, so let's, let's deal with that a little bit at a time. On Sunday evenings, I'd like to try to deal with the doctrine of what we in the church believe. Now, everybody here has got your different interpretations. Everybody here will tell me, right, well, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, that's fine. That don't mean you're right, and that don't mean I'm wrong. That don't mean I'm right, and that don't mean you're wrong. We just interpret it a little bit different. Some people will tell me, uh, they'll come to me and say, well, the Bible don't really teach that. Well, I beg your pardon. It does teach that. It's very important that we understand what Messiah means, but on top of that, what the doctrine of God is all about. All right? So let's start from the beginning. I've read verse 16. My 
my doctrine is not mine, but it's his that sent me. So let's start from the beginning, all right? Everybody has heard me say this numerous of times, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. So we basically understand that the beginning in the book of Genesis is the true beginning of it all. Somebody said, but Brother Day, uh, but according to the, the records that we have accounts of, this world's only been around here for X amount of years. Well, I kind of disagree with that for one reason. There's no time lapse between verse 1 and verse 2. None whatsoever. It just says, in the beginning, God. Then verse 2 says, and God created the heavens and the earth. All right? So God created the heavens and the earth. But there's a, there's a verse that I'm, I'm going to tell you, folks. People, when you start reading your Bibles, you, you start reading, you start reading so fast that you skip over something important. The Bible says that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Now, that word deep comes from also the word that we use as oceans or water. So water was here on the earth when, when God passed over it. So somebody said, well, they got evidence to say that they found bones of dinosaurs that are 250 million years old. Well, folks, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that the earth, if, if, if the Bible says if God said it, he blessed it. And if he blessed it and it's here, he created it. So we need to just accept it and move on. Well, the theory that is then is this. When I read this verse, the first thing I thought about was God, uh, Jesus said, My doctrine is not of mine, but of his that sent me from the beginning. Whenever, the, whenever God said, Let us make man in our own image, and in the image of God did he make man. And then when the man came upon the scene, he saw everything that he was blessed with. And then God gave him a brain to be able to pick. That's a cow. That's a horse. That's a chicken. That's a pig. That's a fruit tree, a banana tree, apple tree, peaches. He had the ability to name them. But then he looked around and saw that he had everything that God created had somebody he partnered with. Man did not have a partner. Now, there's a distinct understanding in this particular verse, folks, that some people don't kind of grasp. But when God said it's not good that man should be alone, that we need to help make help. We need to make him a help meet, not a mate, meet. Now, this help meet then will become a partner in the, uh, the, the establishment that God was trying to create. He said, a man should cleave to his wife. A man should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. And there they become one flesh. That's explains it all to me they can't nobody's going to change my mind on how i feel about that god made adam and eve god did not make steve and eve or adam and steve it was adam and eve period okay now you're going to come running up to me later and go well i believe no god said let's make man and woman but then God said something interesting. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Boy, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this something, folks. You can't multiply with two male factors. You can't multiply with two female factors. You have to be a male and a female to reproduce your... Y'all not smiling. <laughs> well, in the garden, God said to Adam and Eve, well, said to Adam... Adam, you can have anything in the garden, anything. But what sits in the center of the garden, do not touch. Do not touch. Do not look upon. Do not bother it. Okay, now help me here, folks. Y'all help me with this and right quick. If mama says don't, what does that word don't mean? Don't. Leave it alone. All right, now, folks, now let's picture this for a second. We got paradise. We have got literally paradise out here. We've got, there's no cold weather. There's no heat weather. They, uh, as a matter of fact, it's so comfortable. You can run around naked. <laughs> run around naked in the Garden of Eden. All right? There was no guilt 
There was no shame based. There was no, it was natural. And then God said, it's not good that man be alone, so let's create him a help meet. Now that word meet, M-E-E-T, look it up in Genesis. It's there, y'all. The Bible simply says, let us make man a help meet. And he created from his rib cage. He took a rib from man and he made a woman. Now this woman must have been tremendously beautiful. Jesse DePrentice said this <laughs> when, when he read that verse. If you open your Bibles in Genesis and you look at the verse when God brought Eve to Adam, it is written in big bold letters, W-O hyphen M-A-N. And this is the way Jesse DePrentice says it. Woo! Evidently, this lady must have been something to look at. The beauty. All right? Now, my God, if I understand the, the fundamentals of this doctrine of, of who God is, God don't make a mess. God don't make a mess. Well, Brother Johnny, I don't feel like I'm adequate enough. What does the word adequate mean? I don't live up to standards? Is that what not it means? Whose standards are you trying to live up to? That little bitty skinny thing that they put on TV to try to save you a car that if she gets in front of the light, you can see slam through her? Or the image of a living God? There's not an ugly person in this world if you really set it to mind. Y'all better amen me. Y'all sitting there looking at me like, dude, I'm the ugliest creature walking on God's green earth. No, you're not. No man will ever look at me or no woman will ever look at me. Yes, they will. They do every day. Drive a car. Go to the mall. They ain't going to look. Well, something happened in the garden. There was this little slew foot, as Brother Jesse used to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of slithered around in the garden. and He climbed up into that tree and told Eve a lie. L-I-E. A simple, right down to the last period in that statement. Lie. He told Eve, try the fruit. You surely won't die, though you were told you would. Now, the devil made this tree something exciting, something desirable, something that they just had to try. Y'all, I don't know what kind of fruit it was. It don't matter. God said don't. But then the Bible says she saw that the fruit of this tree was good for food. Now, she took on the responsibility to make sure that Adam got fed. Adam did everything else, making sure the garden was in proper perspective because, see, God showed up in the cool of the day. Every day, God showed up. And the Bible says that he walked with them in the cool of the day, enjoying that fellowship. Everybody write that down. Enjoying that fellowship. Everybody remember that. Because I'm about to share with you a doctrine that's listed in the book of Genesis. God, Eve took a fruit from that tree and she ate of it, and she showed it to Adam, and, and uh, one of the brothers that I used to pastor a church said, well, that woman grabbed that boy by the arm and twisted his arm behind his back and made him make that fruit. I'm sitting there looking at him going, dude, you're a dead man. I wouldn't dare say that in a house full of women. I said, that is not biblical. You did not read that in the scriptures. The Bible says that he took it freely. Right. Now, all of a sudden, Brother Carl, we got a situation. All of a sudden, the Bible says that their eyes were open. And, and then, then when, I, when, I, when I read that, I thought to myself, oh, God, please close my eye. Close my physical eye and let me see the spiritual. Let me visualize what it means to be spiritual. The fleshly eye is destroying people, but the spiritual eye. Well, God said, where are you guys at? It's the cool of the afternoon, and God's walking through the Garden of Eden, and he's looking for them. 
And he goes, Adam, where you are? Where are you, Adam? Where are you? And the Bible says that Adam says, we're here, but we're hiding from you. The Bible says this. God said, why are you hiding? And then he said, did you eat of the fruit? Did you eat of the fruit? Now, y'all, most people don't like to hear this, but there was a sacrifice made the day that they sinned against God. He killed a goat and made them clothing. That was a sacrifice. He excommunicated them out of the garden. No man will ever be able to enter back in. No man would ever be able to see the beauty of what God had laid for man to see. Now, the doctrine behind this goes like this. Jesus said in verse 16, My doctrine is not of mine, but, but of his that sent me. But look what it says in verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. All right? You will know. Adam and Eve sinned against God, so God excommunicated them out of the Garden of Eden, and now God said to Adam, because you believed the woman, you will sweat for your food. Turned to the woman and said, because you listened to the demon, you will bear children in pain. To the serpent he put on his belly, and told him he would eat the dust of the ground. God don't play. So what's the doctrine behind this? Number one, folks, listen to me. Jesus came to this earth for a purpose and a reason. And it's because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. There was a sin curse placed upon mankind because they disobeyed God. It wasn't the fact that they ate of the tree. The, the fact is they disobeyed God. God said, don't, they did. That's the only sin that I have dug in my head to try to figure out. People come to me, well, they realized they was naked. Come on, people. They ain't even telling how long they walked around in the garden naked until they realized that something had to change in their life. Something had to change them to come to the knowledge that something's different about each other. They had it made. They didn't have no seasons. They didn't have no rainy days or they didn't have no stormy days or four or three, three or four inches of snow. They had it made. But in verse 17, he said, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Brother Mark, this is where we start to pay attention Especially, I am. I'm starting to pay attention more now to what the church is all about. I still accept and believe that there's more to this than just showing up, picking some pretty songs, and then letting the preacher speak for about 35 to 40 minutes, have a time to sit down and study the Sunday school material, have a time to bring all the kids together and let the kids go outside and, and learn a, a verse. There's more to this church thing that God laid out from the beginning. Now, God knew that he was going to have to send Jesus to pay the ultimate sacrifice. In the book of Corinthians, Paul wrote this. Paul said, no goat, no bull, no dove, no amount of, of talents that you put in the plate will ever suffice the sacrifice that God needed. And that sacrifice came in a boy by the name of Emmanuel. Now, Jesus came to die for Brother Robert Nipper and Brother John. Y'all folks, I'm going to go ahead and say this. He died for Barack Obama, and he died for Donald Trump. I'm going to step out a little further and say this. He died for Hillary Clinton. And he died for that bus driver that'll pick up them kids Tuesday morning on their way to school. There's no respecter of person. Everybody has this sin curse in their life, and you must be born again. That is the doctrine. Well, preacher, how do I be born again? Do I go back into my mother's womb? No. Right here. 
right here. Do you realize that this is the strongest muscle in mankind in man's body, the heart? Do you realize that you can hurt any parts of your body and live? But if you damage the heart, it's real hard to live on. It's real hard. The brain can be functionally uh, uh, messed up to where it can't do any kind of functions at all. But as long as the heart clicks, ticks, that body will live on. Now, verse 18, Jesus said, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that speaketh the glory, at, glory that sent him, the same is true, and not unrighteousness is in him. When you speak of God, and you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that what you talk about is of God, and now I'm going to share this with you folks. I can stand up here and tell you all the good things about me, and I can tell you all the bad things about me. Well, then all of a sudden what that happens is, is you look upon me and go, Aww. When I ain't worth killing. But let me bring the man of God by the name of Jesus Christ into the very picture of what we're trying to create. When we stand up here and we strap these guitars on, we're not trying to show you how talented we are. We're trying to show you that we want to worship God, regardless of what it might be like. I've told you the story about the revival that I went to, and I had my little cassette tapes, and I had my system set up, and I'd pop my tape in there, and I would sing my songs, and I would give God all the praise, because I thought that was what I was supposed to do, but then that granny got up in the middle of the church, and y'all, I'm so afraid she was going to fall through one of the cracks in the floor. This church was so old, they had the piano nailed to the wall. She made her way to the piano, and she sat down on that upright piano, and she said, baby, follow me. Sure. She started playing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And all of a sudden, inside, all I could feel was the love that this young this, this lady had done on it. And she was so arthritis up that her fingers were was bent and twisted, but she banged on that piano just as hard as she could bang. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. I done sang the all four, the, all five of the verses, and she turns to me and she says, Can we do it one more time, preacher? And the brother that was sitting over there, the pastor that was sitting in the church said, yes, ma'am, Miss Maybell, you go right ahead. She'd play something else. And then I'd pick up on the song, and I'd start singing. She looked at me, and she says, you got too pretty of a voice to be singing through canned music. First time I ever heard that word, canned music. I told Nicole, I said, baby, we got to get rid of our tapes. They're canned up. In verse 19, did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go you about to kill me? Now, I've preached this, and I've said this over and over again. I will not be judged by the law, but I'll be judged by Jesus Christ. The grace that Jesus showed me, I've accepted. I've accepted that mercy. He gave me on, on that cross when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he gave me his life. I accepted it. I have put it here and in my heart. And I have made up my mind that I'm not using that excuse no longer. No longer am I using that excuse. I'm only human. That's ridiculous. I am human. And the air is human. But folks, I'm here to tell you that if the Spirit is in you, you'll know it, you'll live it, and you'll move on. That Spirit will dwell forever. Now, let me, let me simply put it to you this way. I cannot sit. I cannot sit down and start writing something down if something wasn't inspiring me to do so. I couldn't. Now, why couldn't I? Because I'm going to tell you why I couldn't. Johnny ain't got enough sense to know how to do stuff like that. Something had to intertwine in my heart and in my brains and my feelings for me to find these words. Now, I don't sleep good. I'll go ahead and tell you. Well, I used not to. I got books at home that I have bought. You can buy them at the dollar store for a dollar a piece, and I'd buy these, these uh, black notebooks with paper inside of it. 
And whenever these thoughts would come, I'd sit and write. I got two just slam full of stuff that you probably start reading and go, this is gerbish. To me, it was my inner feelings. And I found out real quick that that was my way out. That was my way out to be able to help me move on. I got a couple more verses I want to read you. The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill them. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you the circumcision, and not because it of uh, Moses, but of the Father. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If any man on the Sabbath day receives a circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken. And ye are angry at me because I have made a little man every whit whole of the Sabbath day. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said one of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? I want to close with this. One of the most devastating elements in a relationship that you have with Jesus is the criticism that you're going to receive for what you believe. And don't sit there and tell me you don't get criticized for what you believe. Because you will. Every one of you will be criticized for what you believe. But folks, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I'd rather know that I'm preaching the gospel of God than the sugar-coated messages that you want to hear. Because when I stand before God, there's only one thing I want to hear God say. Well and good, my faithful servant. Come on in. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. Nobody looking on. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. Nobody looking on. We all are of God's children. Everyone here knows and accepts and believes what they have. Even from the smallest child that's here to the oldest child that's here. We all accept who we are. We also understand and And realize that the greatest of all that we have is the love that God shares. What kind of love does God share? He evidently loves us pretty pretty awesome because he gave us his only begotten son. His only begotten son. Now my question tonight is this. I look around the room and I know everybody's testimony. I have heard what you know and what you believe. I'm here to let you know, folks. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if this is the last day that we should see our earthly or physical, then it's coming a time that we should be going home. Why did I choose all these songs that have something to do with the cross? It's because that's where it begins for us. It was on the cross of Calvary. Jesus gave his life so that you wouldn't have to. All he asks you to do is receive his son. By receiving his son, all you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe with the heart. Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. Listen to the uh, music. And if there's anybody here that needs to make a decision for the Lord tonight, I encourage you to do so right now. Come on.
I thank you for this day. I thank you, dear God, for these folks that are here tonight. I thank you for their love. Lord, but most of all, I thank you for their dedication they have for you. Father, we praise you here tonight. And Lord, I pray for protection for each and every person that's here. You're so good to us, dear God, and we thank you for the love that you show. But Father, for somebody here that needs to make a decision for you, Lord, I'll, I'll be the last, you the last person to leave. And so Lord, I'm praying, dear God, that if they've got a question they want to talk, I'm right here. Lord, I thank you for showing the word to me. And Lord, I thank you for giving me the knowledge to seek and to find the proper words to say. Father, as we leave this place tonight, dear God, I pray, Father, that you get everybody home safe and let no harm befall on anybody because, Lord, we love you. We just want you to be done. And all God's people said, Amen. Turn to somebody and tell them you're glad to see them and you love them.